Hey there, TLC Tribe, it's Veronica Jones here. And today my special guest is the fabulous Caroline. Caroline is a community and events fundraising coordinator based in Sydney. And she's joining us today to talk to us about her experience with coaching. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to the lovely Caroline and welcome Caroline. Thank you for joining us today. No, thank you for having me, Veronica. Well, I can't wait to get started here. So I'm going to hand over to you straight away. And just wondered if you could share with us how you found yourself stepping into this journey of coaching. Yeah, um, what I found was I felt really stuck, to be honest. And I was at a point where I didn't want to be stuck anymore, but I just didn't know where to turn. Um, and I just kind of figured that I just, I needed some help and I needed some guidance. And I think, ironically, I think I was listening to a podcast and they kept on mentioning, you know, they mentioned therapy, then they mentioned a life coach. And I thought, well, I don't know what a life coach is. So let me, that sounds interesting. So I decided to um, research and Google life coaches and a, a few came up that I looked, including yourself, and um, actually had booked a life coach with somebody else that's actually local. Um, but then you're, you came up with a complimentary session. So I thought I might as well do a complimentary session and see how we vibe and and then it vibed. So it was great. <laughs> it sure did vibe. <laughs> we vibed. <laughs> what a great time we had. <laughs> we had all lots of fun times. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of um, you wanting to make some changes, what do you think had previously held you back before you actually started listening to the podcast and, and maybe discovering what coaching might entail? Um, I honestly think it was what people would think, to be honest. I think one of the reasons what people would think, like a life coach, like it sounds just very LA, very Hollywood, or my reality TV stars have one. So I just, you know, I was wondering if people just thought, oh, you saw this on like Van Der Pump Rules and now you're going to try it out. <laughs> um, I think the second thing that probably held me back maybe was cost because it just sounds expensive, to be honest. And you just think, you know, like, it's just a lot, is there a lot of money involved? And if there is a lot of money involved, like, what if it doesn't help? Have I just thrown my hard earned cash down, um, you know, down the barrel? And But I think the thing that really kept me from changing myself and looking for help was really just being vulnerable with someone. I think being vulnerable, I think for me was scary. And I think it does scare a lot of people, um, especially when you don't know that person. And, you know, I think people have been burned with vulnerability in the past. So that was something that I kind of needed to get my head around. Because in order for it to work, you really needed to be vulnerable, but also honest. Mm. So I think those are probably the three reasons that kind of helped me back. Or, you know, when I did, you know, pay my first half of my time, I was like, oh, really? You've, you've done it now. So is this something you're really wanting to do? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd rip the bandaid off. Yeah, then. you have to rip the bandaid off. <laughs> so what actually got you through those initial hesitations? You. <laughs> <laughs> honestly we just it um we vibed I really felt like you listened to me and you have a great bubbly personality and I felt like I was just talking to a friend to be honest and it wasn't this hardcore thing there are during the the uh the course there are challenges and you would hope so you would hope that you are challenged to really look deep within yourself and because I feel like if you really look deep within yourself and you challenge yourself if you get through that stuff you can get to the other side um, but we, I just really felt connected to you, to be honest, and you were really understanding and really gave me, and you're really honest, which I really appreciate. I think I appreciate transparency and authentic, like authenticity. And I think for you, you kind of ticked those boxes for me and kind of cancelled my other life coach session that was going to be held on the Friday and decided to, ironically, I thought I needed to actually physically see someone face to face, which eventually we did, funnily enough, but I really thought of something you had to go like in your office and face to face, but then this just worked out. So yeah. Yeah. Well, thank goodness for the power of Zoom that united I us. Know. <laughs> the power, you know, one of the things that silver, maybe one of the minor silver linings that came from COVID that everyone kind of was able to shift their mindset and maybe shift their work online. And, you know, Zoom probably got very very rich from it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well it's created um no worldwide boundaries now which is obviously so great for coaching i get to you know talk to you in sydney people in texas it's, it's absolutely fantastic the possibilities are endless and they're pretty great actually yeah absolutely well let's get into it then because i'm very keen to hear about what the coaching journey was like for you as i'm sure our viewers and listeners are and i wonder if you could talk us through that and what sort of changes you started to see in yourself 
Okay, the changes I saw, I've, I think I will speak in general, like at the end of the course, I feel like I've transitioned. So as somebody who felt very stuck in the beginning, I feel like I've kind of sh like a snake shed a skin and I'm moving forward in my life, which is what's something that I really wanted to do. Um, but also mentally, I think. I, and I noticed little changes about myself. I'm a bit more calmer these days. I'm not as probably as, as anxious, I think. And I think it's because of the exercises that we've done together and just keeping those exercises going and being consistent with them. Like even I actually saw a friend of mine yesterday and I hadn't seen her in months. Like I literally did this course and I hadn't hadn't even told her and then she looked at me she's like you're really different like you're really good like you're really like almost a different person I was like well ironically enough we haven't seen each other for like three four months and I actually <laughs> had a life coach and I feel so much better about myself that's amazing to hear how wonderful and how wonderful that someone else also saw that in you and um that analogy you mentioned there that sort of shape a snake I should say shedding its skin um, yeah, that's really interesting. And I wondered in order for you to do that, what did you start to shift in the process? I think first my mindset, to be honest, I think sometimes, I think as humans, we kind of sometimes play the victim game a little bit. Do you know what I mean? And so you just kind of have to shake that. And I really just had to accept myself, um, and get confidence in myself and just realize that I'm on my own unique path. And once I, that got into my head and I really, really believed it, I feel that's when I could see changes coming through. But I think also um, I would urge anyone who does like a course like this is to really immerse yourself in it, like really be open, really be honest, um, be vulnerable. And, and that is a hard thing, especially to do when you first start off is to be vulnerable, um, do the work, really do the work because um, – Sometimes, sometimes you do the work and you like don't see the point of this, or you're like, "This is a bit too hard. This is getting a bit too personal." But eventually, you will see the results from that. Yeah, totally. And it's when we do that that harder inner work, and we go from that um, comfort zone we're in, and we go into that growth zone, as you and I dis discussed, that we feel that stretch, and we feel like, "Ooh, is this right?" And yet, when we get into that growth zone, that's when things start to transform, which is so good and so powerful. And so, you were going through this program. You mentioned um, seeing changes in yourself. So. Talk to, me, talk to me about what changes you started to see or feel in yourself occurring. Um, I think the changes I would see was positivity. And I feel like when you're positive and you have an open mind, you can see the world a bit brighter. And I think when you see the world a bit brighter, you can see the possibilities. Yeah, I think this is probably the main one is really just the change in mindset and looking at things differently I think I would call myself a cynical person by nature and just even switching that across instead of thinking "Ugh, this is a challenge why you know why me why I think now I kind of think okay this is the opportunity you know like let's see what I can get done what's let's see what I can change and I feel like that's probably the best thing is really the learning the tools to keep that mindset and even though sometimes you may not have the chance, like I'm supposed to, you know, do my gratitude journal, but sometimes life gets in the way and you can't, you really should, and I really should go back to that and I'm going to, but just even having those five minutes of doing like a gratitude meditation just gets me in the right state of mind. And I think that's important to do. Mm, absolutely. Though it's all those incremental, um, you know, tools, techniques, um, actions that we take that add up to that long term sustainable change that we're looking for and that you experienced. And, and finding um, those that work for you and really yeah. loving and enjoying those, like, those, it might even seem a bit corny and you'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But if it feels right to you and it like, like connects to your soul and, and your personality, then you should definitely, you know, hone into those techniques and take them as your own and you even build on them if you so wish. Yeah, absolutely. As I know you did when we did some work on the gremlins, you even took um, some visualization exercise and added some extra pieces in, which was really cool. You were always chips in on this, like I'm going all in. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. So as you were going through this program um, and you were seeing these changes, what do you feel was maybe an aha moment for you that stood out? You might've had a few, but maybe there's one that springs to mind. Um, ironically, the gremlins, actually. I really right. had to work that that week, 
really was tough for me working on the gremlins and i remember i think my manager saying to me are you okay like are you right you seem really off and it's because i had to work through that stuff and i had to kind of tackle things that bothered me but i never really acknowledged that they bothered me you know i mean whether mm-hmm. it's somebody was spoke about my appearance or or just something like that and really getting into that and confronting yourself i think the gremlins really that exercise it was hard for me i'm not gonna lie it, it was quite tough and it, it actually seeped into my like my personal life like i mentioned my manager was like you seem off like you don't seem your happy self your cheaper self like are, are you sure and even like called me on the mobile <laughs> she's like i know i asked you in the meeting but i'm gonna ask you again are you all right i was like no i'm fine i'm fine but it was just i had to kind of go through that and through that negativity to understand why sometimes i hold myself back and it's not always external factors and influences sometimes it's yourself and learning that about it and as and as uncomfortable as it is once you get through that section you understand yourself a bit more like that was my aha moment yeah. and i can still now when i can see something or i'm going to have a bad day or i don't feel great whatever that is i can actually now say to myself okay gremlins time for you to go back into your cave now i'm good <laughs> 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 this is it and it, i really appreciate you sharing that and um for anyone who's viewing and listening this uh this particular clip um those gremlins that we have that we can often just keep in the back of our minds as those self-limiting beliefs it's when we have that opportunity to out those gremlins um it gives them less power in our minds so um as you were describing there just getting to know them and going ah that's you i recognize you now is is the tough work because you you become vulnerable to understand that and go ah that's them and yet as you mentioned when you actually out them and then do the work to be able to change those voices what a powerful exercise that can be um hence your aha moment from that <laughs> which was excellent thank you so much for sharing that um no worries what, what i wondered was now is that you're on the other side of all of this now you know you came in feeling stuck and we worked through all this stuff you conquered your gremlins and you're on the upward trend what does it feel like now being on the other side of coaching it's amazing actually because i'm in a more positive and a more hopeful space like and i just learned so much about myself that once you and i think that's the biggest takeaway it's kind of getting to know yourself that's how i what i found about life coaching was ironically we don't take time to get to know ourselves well or we know ourselves on our surface level like we know what we like to watch we know what our drink of choice is at the bar that we're going to go to but sometimes you have to really know yourself like deep down in your soul in order for you to move forward in your life and sometimes it's and that's a difficult conversation to have because sometimes you have to admit wow that really hurt me and it's kind of like i feel kind of silly that it hurt me but it really did hurt me or wow i can't believe i kind of put up with this behavior um you know i, I would never treat someone this way and really maybe even recognizing and maybe even recognizing you know then you may have to trim the fat in order for you to grow and putting some good healthy boundaries up Mm. um and and some people it's sad to say don't want you to be succeed and want you to be happy you know what i mean and sometimes you have to recognize that and but you know sometimes you have to be selfish and i think this society and especially women we see selfish as a bad thing like being selfish self care is a bad thing while i think it's probably one of the best things we can do um and i urge people to do it as much as they can even if it's just like a walk for 10 minutes by yourself in the fresh air it really I feel like walking and getting the sunshine mentally just resets my mind and it may help others as well. Um but yeah, so that's probably the best thing about it. And I think once and and you know, um you know, what what is that saying is you know, knowledge is power. Once you know like about your gremlins or you know something hurts you or you know there's a boundary that you need to set or that person's okay, they've recrossed that boundary. Now I'm going to have to put that that fence up again. You're powerful in yourself. and it's more likely you're going to move forward than backwards do you know what i mean and and even if you maybe falter and we all do you know all our life journeys has a bend in the road do you you know i have recorded sessions i can go back to that i can you can go back to the booklets and refresh your mind about those tools that you learned so you can be in a happier place in your life 
Mm, absolutely. What I mean, what insights there? That's fantastic. I mean, you know, you mentioned there as well. There, are, there are boundaries that you, you get to put in place when you acknowledge certain things are going on in your life. And um, I think from a lot of people, boundaries at first seem like, oh, are we being selfish? You know, by by putting this this in place because this person maybe isn't serving me um, as I'd like them to now in my life. And yet boundaries are badass. <laughs> Once you've got them up, Absolutely. people, they get used to them. People get used to them and then it supports us then to be able to move on. And it's all doing all that inner work along the way to then start acknowledging where those boundaries can be put in place. Um, you know, gives us the keys to the castle really when we've got that mindset piece in place. So um, Absolutely. And I think boundaries are important, you know what I mean? And if you're thinking about boundaries, most likely you need to pop them up. And yes. if someone doesn't respect those boundaries, perhaps that person may not be the best fit in your life for that moment, at least. Mm, absolutely. And in all of this process now, I mean, you've gone through um, yeah, quite a transformation, totally now flourishing going forward. You've got a whole bunch of goals. You're smashing them out of the park, lifestyle in place, the whole thing. Um, from your perspective, what would you say you like most about um, who you've become in the process of all of this? Um, oh, what do I like most? That's interesting because I honestly like everything because I feel like it's kind of like the domino effect. Like, you know, you it just, everything w works. I think it's the best thing about for me for life coaching, I really appreciate, especially working with you, was the holistic view. It was a holistic look at your life. It's not just one section. And I found that I feel like I'm back in balance. I was stuck before and now I'm balanced again. And I, yeah, that's how I think the best thing that I would describe about the whole experience. Yeah, fantastic. And that's actually a really key uh, point to note that, um, you know, someone might come to the forefront and they might have a question about their career and want career coaching. And yet and we can work on that. But yet we're, we're individuals with so many other things that go on in our lives, relationships, family, friends, ex, you know, external interests. And it's when we get all of that in balance that when we've got a goal we want to achieve, it, it supports that in that holistic sense, as you said. And I found with me, we, we focused on one aspect of my life and we worked on little things, but we kept on going to that goal. But do you remember at the end of the session, I just said, I think that's the wrong goal. I think <laughs> the goal I need to focus now is just me. Yes. I mean, as a person, and it took me a couple of sessions to realize that. So, but I never felt like it was a waste of time because it had to lead me to that point. So, absolutely, like you'd go could get coaching for one thing and then realize that you might need what you really need is to work on another aspect of your life. Yeah, absolutely. And that initial goal supports the overall goal that you want for yourself. Yeah, definitely. And that you identified that brilliantly in your sessions. You're like, hang on though. Well, this goal I started off with now, mm, this has changed a little because now I know a little more. <laughs> so I'm going to work on something else, which was great. And we were able to transition and do that, um, which was wonderful in our sessions. And as always, I commended you because you were like, I'm all in. You're doing the work, you're putting in the effort, you stay consistent. Um, and to your credit, you know, you're getting results all along the way. And on that note, um, how would you say coaching impacted um, others in your life, you know, like family, friends, colleagues at work? Um, I think it made me more open with them and more honest, you know, because um, one of the things I think one of the first sessions you told me was like, it's probably a good idea that you actually tell people that you're doing this because that might might affect them. And I remember I actually really felt bewildered. I was actually perturbed. I was like, oh, God, like I had talked to to my parents about it obviously but then I was like who else am I going? like do you know what I mean so then I actually did speak to my manager at work and she was so supportive which was great um but yeah it just made me open a bit more and I just think sometimes and I don't know if this is a me thing or as a woman thing asking for help always seems to be like a weakness for you know like asking for help is seen to be something bad like you don't know something but mm. at the end of the day we're humans we're not supposed to know everything and we're not going to know everything um so i think it just made me a bit more i think honest and a bit more open and then i feel like through all that having being open i feel like then you 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 get to see like i said the brightness of the world but maybe opportunities that maybe were there that you never realized because you weren't looking um you look you're now looking in it in the world in a different direction mm, so yeah absolutely. i think that's definitely made like impacted like others in in my life that i'm 
probably a bit more open with them and a bit more positive and um, like I said it's like before it's a domino effect really like yeah mm, sensational and that's um, a wonderful point that you raised there that um, so often as humans we think that asking for help it's a sign of weakness um, yet it's actually a power play of strength because we can't be expected to have all the answers all of the time. And um, you may remember me saying to you, success leaves clues. Um, yes, and <laughs> very first, our comp session. Yep, our comp session. Yeah, and that's 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 a fact, you know. We've got you know, coaches out there, mentors out there, all these people who've, who've um, have done wonderful things. And we've got the opportunity to reach out um, and learn for those, from those people. And I think that's so important that we, you know, as as women, um, yes, we're often told that that's a sign of weakness if we don't work it out, we, we should struggle and all of this. It's it's crazy, isn't it? Um, so a key takeaway from me talking to you today is let's always ask for, for help, for assistance, and let's use that as a power play in our lives for sure. Um, also, and I guess you can I, help someone else as well, though, you know what yes. I mean? By asking for help, you could be asking, you could be helping someone else. And I mean, in this position like you're obviously guiding me but um there have been so many times where i do know that when i've asked for help it's helped someone else do you know what i mean and, and uh, uh, who knows maybe as life coaches you might even learn from your own you know from the people your clients as well I mean, you know what i mean it's just a more you you're not supposed to know everything it's, it's just it's yeah. physically impossible <laughs> um and you, you just ask for help if you need it that's it. If we're, we're not learning and growing, you know, we're withering away. So embrace that for sure. <laughs> and from your perspective now, if you were um, maybe had the opportunity to advise others um, who might be considering coaching, what would you say to them? Those who are maybe sitting on the fence a bit. Try it because you have nothing to lose and you do have everything to gain. Because mm. I feel in this process, I've gained so much. And I haven't lost anything. Um, so that would be my advice is just give it a go. Um, and listen, it might not be the thing for you, but at least you can cross it off your list and say, you know what, I tried this. It didn't really work out for me. And it will give you options and maybe figure out a way that you can help yourself and other in ways to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Give it a go. Give it a go. <laughs> That's the thing. Got nothing to lose. <laughs> That's it. Take some action. And you'll get some result for sure. <laughs> and if you were to maybe give yourself a mantra now, and I'm probably putting you on the spot for this, give yourself a mantra, but how to, you know, sum up um, everything from coaching um, and something you could carry forward. What would your mantra be now post coaching? Um, you know, um, I'm unique. Nice. I'm unique and that'd probably be my mantra. I'm unique and I'm my own path and I'm my own person. And that's fantastic because we, if we were all the same, life would be so boring. Um, and we all bring different, you know, strengths and sometimes weaknesses um, to the table. Um, and that was make the world go round. So I think my mantra would be, you know, I'm unique and I am A-OK -okay with that. Fabulous. <laughs> so Caroline, anything else you'd like to add now? Um, to our to our discussion, anything at all as we bring this to a conclusion, anything you'd like anyone to know that we haven't covered today? Not, not really, but I just wanted to say thank you to you, actually, because you did push push me and um, it's lovely to have a lovely coach, to be honest, who is there and supportive, but, you know, is tough when needed and is all but is always so nice and always and I you know I look forward to our sessions like which I never you know thought I would be looking forward to a session as somebody who really never really thought it was okay to talk about yourself um really have that time um and that hour was I think it was an hour every week and just once again just getting to know yourself like getting to know myself was you know I look forward to chatting almost to a friend who can give you unique insight because I mean it's always good to get advice and have a support system but we all obviously find that the support system is always colored by the experience that you have and that relationship um so it's, it was really quite nice to have somebody who really didn't know anything about me but did care about me in order for me to move forward in my life oh well thank you so much for sharing that and it was wonderful to have you um, well, you know, work alongside me and me to walk that journey with you um, over our eight week coaching program together. It was an absolute joy. So thank you. And thank you for joining us today, of course. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so 
If you're looking to reach um, new results and new levels, level up your life, just like Caroline has, um, please do feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can visit thelifecoachingco.com.au. And of course, you can hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thelifecoachingco. Or you can find us on Instagram as well, just at thelifecoachingco. So thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today and to Caroline, of course. And until next time, master your mindset, secure your success.